weapon, nerds. Ooh, <laughs> spicy. <laughs> Roll the intro. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Yeah. I am Michael Lee. And I'm Matt. And this is Big FN Nerds. Fuck yeah, it is. And apologies, we didn't give you a heads up last week on what topic we're going to do today because last week was a long ass episode. Because I'm going to be honest, I'm a bit of an idiot. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I'm kind of retarded. <laughs> <Fucking Alex Jones. laughs> I was channeling my inner Alex Jones. I'm going to be honest. I'm kind of retarded. Okay. <laughs> so uh, this week, we're just basically going to stick to the topic of post-apocalypse, mm. you know, in, in, yeah. in light of the latest episode of The Last of Us, you know, next, yep. the whole new series, everything, all that. We're going to stay in that apocalyptic spirit. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, and speaking of apocalypse, apocalypse. Well, lips. At least zombie. Why do you use so much enunciation on lips? I don't know. I don't like it. <laughs> 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 All right. So, uh, oh shit, where did my fact go? Hello. Ooh, you fucked it. Okay, I got it. So the word zombie is thought to have been adapted from the African word nzambi, which me or meaning God. Mm. So Le Grand Zombie or the Grand Serpent was the father of all gods and appeared in the shape of a python. And I'm like thinking to myself, so how does that yeah. turn to where do those things connect? Dead people yeah. being I mean, maybe the word itself, zombie, but I don't know the ties to it. That's yeah. just the where the origin of the word so came some from. Some kind of what you said, some kind of like African serpent god or some shit. Yeah, he's like the. It seems like he's like the Zeus or the Odin of Le the Grand African zombie. Oh, that's French. Yeah. So, uh, and then the other one that I was looking at ties into The Last of Us. Okay. Okay. Because it says, aside from humans, the unassuming ant can also be turned into a zombie. Which cordyceps and shit, right? Yeah. Yep. Ophiocordyceps can synchronize several ants to chew on a leaf and then die. And the fungus then surprise or surprises, then sprouts uh, through the dead ants' bodies. I know that's fucking crazy. And but like they'll be dead and like still the fungus is still moving the fucking little ant around, right? Yeah. That's no, fucking it, crazy. It makes them eat like these certain leaves that i guess are deadly to the ants yeah. you know it's actually funny though is i was reading not reading watching some videos on cordyceps just to get you know get a little bit more into the last of us spirit and Fair i also got the game so i the, the ps5 remake part one attempting to nice. replay it <laughs> attempting <laughs> i am attempting it's a spoopy game it is spoopy and i only play that shit in the dark so and it's fucking swollen I've been playing the new Dead Space remake all in the dark too. And oh yeah, see? Yeah. We'll we'll get to that. We're but all yeah. getting we're all getting spooped. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> uh oh, I also saw another random fact in there that said that National Zombie Day is uh roughly October eighth. October eighth, National Zombie Day. Yeah, so we gotta remember that for next year. Or okay. this year. Because yeah, we're yeah, in twenty twenty. Yeah, this, this year now, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, fun little zombie yeah. facts. Yeah, keep it in the spirit. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I yeah, like yeah, it. yeah. Yeah. So I guess that now it's time for. At Nerdy News. This just in at Nerdy News. What do you want to do? You want to talk about Last of Us first? Do you want to do other shit? No, let's get the let's get the other ones. Matt, other Matt warned me about something, <laughs> and I don't, I don't like it. Yeah, I told him I said you're not gonna like it, and he was like, "Oh no!" I said, <sighs> "You're really not gonna like it." Yeah, I don't. Yeah. So let's <laughs> let's, let's let's get that out of the way. Um. So I told you before, but it seems all but straight up confirmed that Ezra Miller is Ezra Miller. Miller is still the Flash. Oh, why? I don't know. Fuck that guy. I don't know. <laughs> nah, that dude. That dude needs to get fucking kicked in the nuts. Fuck that guy. Yeah, at least a couple times. Yeah, I don't know. As, as, um, as Dan Dan Cummins wouldn't like him either. No, he wouldn't. <laughs> he wouldn't. No. <laughs> 
he uh what is it he said uh so yeah because apparently he showed up for like reshoots back in october yeah uh, reshoots i'm gonna show you no no fucking thanks pedo boy i'm good fuck Fuck him dude like it, DC, you're fucking dumb. I'm not, was, I'm so I hope you guys see this episode just somehow. somehow. And you guys are fucking stupid. <laughs> and they're like, oh yeah, well, they're hundred dollar bills. <laughs> I know, right? They're gonna I'm like, guess what, dude? Your grave is gonna be the same size as mine. Uh, Actually, no, my mine's gonna be really fucking small. I'm gonna cremate, cremate myself. That, I, I I I thought about that. I wanna cremate myself and then ask for NASA to take it up to space and just poof, it's a pretty big ask. And just, I know. Out yeah. Space. Mm-hmm. Well, they're going to tell me no. I'm like, dude, I am space dust, though. Come on, man. Like, why not just let complete me, the circle? Let me go back home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I want to go back home. <laughs> I want to go home. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh, Sandy. Dude, that's so fucking it. shitty. I know. I agree. I, I, I fail to, to grasp why that's a fucking option. Because they can't find a replacement, which is stupid because you have one. <laughs> yeah fucking gustin he dude. did it for a long time he's yeah. almost like a subject matter expert you could say yeah for fuck's sake <laughs> whatever but yeah i was reading i think it i don't i think it was james gunn saying like they were talking to him and they're like yeah he's 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 going through his recovery he's super committed we love the progress he's making I'm like i don't give a fuck you guys understand that there's <laughs> actually been psych psychology studies showing that people with that are pedophiles they don't change it's not they they always revert back somehow. It's never gonna go away. They always stick to that idea of like oh my fucking kid. Like yeah. dude, you go, oh my god. I can't, I can't get with it. Nope. Boycotting DC until they change. Definitely not watching that shit anyway. That's fucking stupid. But uh he did, James Gunn did give us the whole like year one, kind of phase one of what they're gonna be doing. Like Marvel, excuse me. Mm. But uh, yeah, they're kind of going. They're kind of going that route, and I was like, they seem to be doing it the right way. But you know, by by setting up all these movies and shows rather than just jumping right to the big team movie right away. But it's it, to me, it's just it's just too little, too late. Uh, yeah. And the other decisions they've been making, it's just it just overshadows all like whatever good shit they've done lately. And you know, yeah, honestly, the decision making that they've been doing, cutting all the fucking actors that they had, and. Putting the good keeping ones, Ezra keeping Miller. the shitty ones. Like, what the fuck? Are like, you fucking out of the ones you kept? Like, that's the one you're gonna die on that hill for for that one? Didn't they technically still have Amber Heard too? They haven't like let her go. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. <That's> a, <laughs> like, dude. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Make it make sense. No, oh, fucking. Can't. Um, honestly, I think it, it's too little, too late. Also, because Marvel's just, yeah. <laughs> Marvel hasn't had like too good of a, a rapport hmm. as of late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're they're for me they're kind of still sort of teetering because like they'll start to tip and I'm like ah, that sucks and then they'll get me back a little bit and then it kind of teeters. They only had the one. They only had like two things that really kept me on board, which was Spider Man No Way Home. That was great. Black Panther. Yep. Mm, yeah, I guess that was it. <laughs> I think Moon Knight was okay. Moon Knight was all right. Mo- Moon Knight is like a good, okay standalone. But I do wish that we saw a little bit more of, of Moon Knight. Moon Knight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it was all in all, it was like a detective fucking national treasure kind of yeah. movie. Yeah, it was. Or, yeah, movie ish. Yeah. yeah. And, and then what? I, I didn't watch Miss Marvel, but I did like She Hulk for what it was. That would have been. Okay, as a standalone too, like if they didn't bother bringing it into the MCU and just, hey, we're going to have a She-Hulk show. Oh, okay, cool. Mm. Yeah, I liked it. I, for what it was, I think that was that was all right. But uh, let's see. Oh, for, for the Flash movie, it looks like they're going to be going for a, uh, seem like they're seemingly going for a Flashpoint type kind of story. Like he's going to be jamming see, uh, around the multiverse. You're going to keep Ezra Miller for the best fucking Flash <laughs> storyline there is out there. Yeah. And I will say. Fuck you. What I imagine, or like, kind of what uh, is thought they're gonna do is, um, they're gonna have him. That that's gonna be their way to clean up the rest of, like, you know, rip, so they can replace their actors. That's gonna be their way to clean everything up. Yeah, because that set it up. that was their that was their restart in the comics. Mm-hmm. They yeah. restarted then, and then they also had another event where they <clears throat> restarted everything, and then then it became the New Fifty Two, mm-hmm. which those comics are fucking dope. Yeah, I remember those. But um, yeah, that seems like a pretty good way for them to do that. Which 
in their defense, that's a pretty good way to do it. But it's like with uh with Marvel doing the uh the 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 the, the, the multiverse. Tra- yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> with the, them doing the multiverse thing, because now it t- we can tie in all the X Men and mm-hmm, Fantastic mm-hmm. Four, Deadpool. Uh, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> I'm still nervous. I know. So I know. Uh, but uh, but yeah. So that seems to be what they're going to be doing. Hope I don't know. Hope it works out. I guess I don't know. Starfield, the big Bethesda Skyrim in space, as Todd Howard said. That's going to be, that got, I'm uh, sorry, no, did not get delayed. Uh, it reportedly is playable from start to finish. And, uh, you know, hopefully that means we'll get a release date soon. It's supposed to come out this year, I think, still. For uh, me, uh, I don't know why I doubt it. playable doesn't exactly mean that it's good. No, yeah, because they said that was they Cyberpunk. Had bugs. They said that was Cyberpunk. They're like, it's playable start to finish, but it didn't come out for like another year. And then when it came out, it was like, <laughs> oh, oh, no, do I have hiccups? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was gonna say it's like World of Warcraft when you ha- you know how when it it does a new patch, fuck, I have hiccups. <laughs> Damn it! We got some water over there. Where's my water? Got my water. I don't know. People always say just hold your breath and drink water, and then no, I do, I, and then I go. <laughs> I hold my breath for a really long time, and then it'll go away. It's never worked for me. But for World of Warcraft, mm. when you get a new patch, and then there's that part that goes, it's still you can play it. But then there's still that other bar that's got the rest of the data that needs to go through, and then you play the game, and it's a little, yeah, wonky. Yeah, yeah, it's like that. That's yeah. how I think. That's how I imagine playable. Yeah. So it's and it's Bethesda, so it's probably just riddled with bugs. <sighs> yeah, huh? but we'll see. <laughs> I don't know. If I feel like I feel like Bethesda fucks this one up, they're in trouble. You think so? I could be wrong. Because what, what was the last thing? That- <laughs> this is what 47 episodes I've never had a hick of fucking thing. <laughs> I'm getting fucking annoyed <laughs> oh fuck <laughs> oh god it's just alright Matt you talk and do the news I'm gonna hold my breath for a second <laughs> okay <laughs> what were we talking about Bethesda Bethesda okay yeah uh yeah the last thing they did was Deathloop I believe or at least one of the last ones Deathloop it was uh I don't know any of the actors or whatever, but basically the premise was you're in a death loop. Every time you die, you come back and you play as the guy's name's Cole, but you could do mul- you could do multiplayer because you basically um, in that game, you're randomly hunted by this chick, Juliana. And when you could do multiplayer, like someone could play Juliana and you could invade other people's games. Otherwise, Juliana is just an AI who just runs in, but you could turn that on or off. But that's what they did. And uh, I finished that last year. So that's Shifu. Kinda. Like Except how you don't age Shifu, or anything. But yeah. 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 But yeah, you die and you come back. But you had like one or like two, like you could die twice before you like started over the the level you were on or whatever. Oh, uh, gotcha. But you. you had to like, the way they made you think about this shit. Like you had to, because the goal of that game was you had to kill, I forgot how many visionaries they were. You had to kill everybody in one night. Jesus. To reset the loop. And so like you'd kill one guy, but then you'd find out doing that, like, oh, like when you're investing in their area, oh, later, like, because there's different times of day in like four different sections of the map. Yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, when you find out, oh, if I killed him here, sure, he's here in the morning time. But in the noon time, he's down here with this other guy that I need to get so I can get two and one. Mm-hmm. And then like you find out there's a party at nighttime where there's like four of them, you know. Gotcha. So gotcha. you got to you do loops and loops to you figure was, out. That was, that, when did that come out? Last year. Uh, really? I didn't fucking hear it about it. It was pretty early last year, I think. If not very late 2021, but I'm pretty sure it was. Hmm. But uh, yeah, that was the last big thing I remember from them, and uh, it was all right. It was all right. Um, anyway, so let me see. Uh, you want to hear about DC's lineup for films, shows, and films they're making? Oh, they're doing shows too. Yeah, they're doing, and they're doing the Marvel thing, huh? Yeah. You guys can't come up with your own thing. <laughs> well, that, wow. so that so that's it. So Marvel's on Disney Plus, and all DC shits like on HBO, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, so they're gonna be doing an animated one called Creature Commandos. The art style looks kind of cool. Okay, I was gonna say DC's animated films they're animated are films. always good. Yeah, they're good. They're always fun to watch. We'll I enjoy that. the DC animated films. Hmm. But those are also done by different people, not fucking James Gunn. So Yeah, we'll he and see. he is writing this creature commandos one. Hmm. Um then they're doing a spin off show of uh called Waller, you know, Amanda Waller from um Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be about her. Uh Viola Davis is coming back. 
to play her. Okay. She's so, uh, reprising her role. Yeah. That's the word, right? Reprising, I believe so. Um, yeah. So that's coming out. Okay. Made, uh, uh, written by Crystal Henry from The Watchmen Show, which I didn't watch. Saw the movie, but not the Watchmen show. Watchmen Show. I didn't watch the show. Yeah. I heard it was good. Super good, but I didn't see it. Uh, and then also the creator of the Doom Patrol TV series, which I hear is also really good, but I have not watched that either. Hmm. Uh, they're making a Superman Legacy. Uh, it's a movie featuring the Man of Steel. That gun is writing. He may direct. Hmm. You would think that with a name like that, you would have Henry Cavill in there. <sighs> you suck. You guys really shit the bed on that one. <laughs> they're shitting the bed all over the place. Uh, We've yeah. had to clean the sheets a bunch already. <laughs> We're almost out of detergent, you nasty fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Fix your stomach. <laughs> Brody, son of a bitch. Uh, then we got a, they're doing a show called Lanterns. I guess Ooh. it's going to be, which I fucking love Green Lantern. Yeah. That's one of my favorite DC heroes. And that Ryan Reynolds movie. Yeah. I like all of the bad. Red Lanterns. Yeah. Atrocitus and all those guys. Love being fucking rage And the filled. cat. What was the cat's name? Fuck, I don't know. Forgot to. <laughs> I don't but, yeah. but I remember them saying that cat was like. That motherfucker is crazy. <laughs> Menace. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lantern, it's, I guess it's supposed to be following Hal Jordan and John Stewart, you know, the big nice. two. Nice. The big two lanterns. Nice. Fuck yeah. So uh, I love John Stewart. He's a badass fucking lantern, man. Yeah. I remember when I was younger, I was like, ah, he's lame. Hal Jordan's the fucking main guy. And then later, I was like, nah, John Stewart's the guy. <laughs> oh, I was just immature. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know what I was talking about. Fuck. <laughs> so apparently, I guess the Lanterns is going to play a super big role leading into the main story they're telling across everything. Because I guess they're trying to keep it all connected. Yeah. And not like, I guess they're, because he said they're trying to make it so you're not like, oh, what ties in and what doesn't? He's like, they all tie in somehow. We're going to try to keep the same actors doing animated shit, you know, from the live action, doing the voice for animated shit too, shit like that. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, some show called The Authority. Based on a team of superheroes with rather extreme methods of protecting the planet. So maybe a team of anti-heroes of sorts. I was going to say, yeah. literally sounds like anti-heroes. Because if they yeah. say extreme methods, that means they're doing some shit that heroes yeah. would not fucking do. Yeah, that means they're, they're going to save you. But they're going to shoot that motherfucker in the head yeah. if they have to, you know. Thomas Wayne. <laughs> whack. Yeah, fucking. That's the best Batman ever. <laughs> Just He's waxing like, people. Put him in jail. Nah. Nah, fuck that. Nah. Take him, I am the take judge, a the jury, and the fucking executioner. Get fucked. All of them. Is that it for now? Oh, Evan? yeah. What, what was it? They said, uh, sorry, the little quote at the end says, they're, they're kind of like Jack Nicholson in A Few Good Men. You know, they know you want them on the wall, <laughs> basically. <laughs> uh, I think there's a couple others. Uh, one called Paradise Lost, uh, based around Paradise Island, you know, Themyscira, Wonder Woman, and all that shit. Mm. So I guess it's going to be filled with political intrigue and scheming between power players. I'm tired of politics. I'm I don't want. It. I don't want that. I'm over it. In, in Wonder Woman, I'm good. Not to mention the last. <laughs> the last thing we got of Wonder Woman wasn't so hot. So I didn't see the '84 or whatever it was. Yeah, it wasn't so hot. Yeah. They did my. They did my girl Cheetah dirty. I heard about that. I heard about that. And, uh, and it's not because of the actress choice. I know some people had the issues with that. I didn't. That wasn't a bothersome thing to me. It's just. How underplayed hmm. Cheeto because Cheeto's a fucking monster. Oh yeah. She's badass. I don't I don't know a lot, but I know she's always a problem. <laughs> she's always <laughs> a problem. Because she's the she's the um fucking she's a god. She's just like how how uh Wonder Woman is, or like she's a demigod. Mm. Or she not Cheetah is not a demigod. She has a god spirit inside of her, mm. and that's how she turns into okay. Cheetah. Versus kinda like, Wonder Woman like is Moon a Knight. demigod. Yes. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. exactly. Right. I got gotcha. you. Only thing is that she can't transform. She's just cheetah all the time. <laughs> cheetah all the time. Yeah. Uh, so then the next one is The Brave and the Bold. Apparently, this is going to be the introduction of the big DCU Batman. I don't know if they're going to keep Robert Pattinson. Mm -hmm. But I know they're making a sequel to the Batman. Uh, what's new? We're getting another fucking Batman. <laughs> and another to, Superman. Do I need to see fucking his parents die again? I know. I mean, we didn't in the last one. To be fair. No. To be fair. To be fair. But also, to be fair, apparently that's not tied into the DCEU. Oh, but so. this, this, sorry, the point about this was it's going to be actually Batman with Damien. <laughs> you always say sorry. Oh, well, because I, because I <laughs> fucking interrupt me and then it just it always says sorry. Sorry. Da -da 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 -da. Sorry there, right? <laughs> but I got to say, but yeah, it's supposed to be him with Damien Wayne. Oh, his son. His son. Oh. 
Yeah, this, Ooh, it's, a, it's a very strange father son story. Talia? I don't know. They didn't mention anything about that. Whatever. I want to see Talia. What is it? The one She's badass. Bruce Wayne, who also introduces our favorite Robin, Damian Wayne, who's a little son of a bitch. <laughs> that's in quotes. I think that's Gunn who said that. I gotta say that when I'm drinking. <laughs> <laughs> the little son of a uh, So that, um, and then the sequel to The Batman that I was talking about, Pattinson's coming back to do that. So I wonder if they're going to have him, if that's going to be the main DCU Batman. Are they going to have him in The Brave and the Bold? But then you can't have two different Batmans because that contradicts what he said about keeping everything, you know, together. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to just, <laughs> whatever, DC, just do whatever you want to fucking do. I'm fucking, uh, I'm over here, guys. This dumb shit. Two more. Two more quick ones. We got. Oh, my God. <laughs> a, show about, a show about Booster Gold. You know about him? No. He's a, he's a hero that comes from the future and he's basically a fucking loser. But he uses all his future. Sounds like a loser. Who has the fucking name Booster Gold? <laughs> yeah, he's a fucking douchebag. But uh, yeah, they said, quote, it's about a loser from the future who uses basic future technology to come back to, to today and pretend to be a superhero. Mm-hmm. He, he Gunn describes it as imposter syndrome as a superhero. Yeah. Uh, and then Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow is the last one, I believe. It's going to be taking cues from recent Tom King written miniseries. Promises a different take. Uh, we'll see the difference between Superman and her because we know the difference. Like, I guess Superman, you know, raised in a loving family, becomes a hero as opposed to, uh, Supergirl. Sorry. Yeah, Supergirl. Uh, not, not so. so. I know, like, basically she's raised on, like, the last little piece of Krypton, sees everybody die. And just I say she rough. was, yeah, because she's older than, yeah. um, kal And what do they say? She's, like, arguably, like, more powerful than him? Not even arguably. Like, she is straight up? She's straight up more powerful. There you go. And she's... Way, and way she less, has rage uh, issues. Yeah, that she she turned into a, a red lantern at one point, and that shit was fucking fire. I was like, yes, that's what we call a problem. <laughs> no, I, I call that a solution. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> that's all the DC shit. Let's get into the Last of Us. Yeah, let's get into the actual like fun stuff. Let's do it because DC I, just yeah. that that move. But I figured that DC lineup was worth mentioning. They're 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 phase one, so to speak. I think we could have left out Booster Gold. No one knows the fuck. <laughs> Somebody does, and somebody's excited. I don't give a shit, but somebody's excited about it. <laughs> so, Last of Us episode three. Spoiler warning: If you didn't see it, yeah, fuck immediately out. off the bat, I'm just, I'm not fucking around. Spoiler warning: Go watch it. We didn't forget this time. <laughs> <laughs> Halfway through. Oh yeah, by the way, spoiler. <laughs> yeah, almost always. Uh, okay, so uh, I, first off, I will just say, I think this is the first show that I'm never gonna fucking skip the intro. I fucking love the music. I love the, the Last of Us music. It, it gives me Game of Thrones vibes. Hmm. So I was just like, I, I'm skipping. Oh, does, <laughs> does, yeah. that's why. Because it, it does the whole. It does the same exact method of Game mm-hmm. of Thrones, where they have something growing, or they're they're moving the camera, and it's like Camera's a small sweeping, sweeping stuff. Yeah, they do. It's the exact same thing. They exact or exact same template. Just. The Last of Us, so I'm like, I'm good. Next time they play The Last of Us, they should just fucking... <laughs> Dude, I think of that all the time as soon as it starts playing. I'm just like... <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, but I don't know. I fucking love The Last of Us music. Also, uh, I fucking forgot the guy's name right now who just did it. But point being, that guy... Ron Swanson? <laughs> Talking about that guy? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the guy who did the music for The Last of Us. Oh, okay. He also did the music for one of my favorite shows on Netflix ever, uh, Hell on Wheels. Oh, that. uh, that's another, like, almost Sons of Anarchy kind of thing, huh? Hell on Wheels? Isn't it? No, it's, well, it's back in late 1800s, about around the... Uh, oh, it's a the, Western. The main, yeah. The main focus is the, uh, but it's made by AMC. Was. It's over now. No, I was gonna say it's a western, so I was like, yeah. never mind. I know, but I think it was I'm good. not watching it. It was really good. I'm sure I'll take your word for it, Matt. Fuck, bro. <laughs> so good. Fuck. <laughs> but yeah, he did the music for that, and I fucking I loved it. Anyway, uh, what anyway, what do you think so, about the episode? So I liked it. I definitely a different take on Bill and Frank's story. Uh-huh. Definitely, but not a bad one. Different, and you know, I'm not. I, I, you know, like, like we were talking about it a little bit. I'm not, we're not too sure exactly, like, why, why you needed to do that. The, yeah. Well, so what, what I, what purpose did? What it I said was, 
it gave zero story progression towards what we're actually watching, which is Joel and Ellie's story. Well, yeah, I guess, I guess the little bit of progression we did get was in the last ten minutes. You know, when we see Joel and Ellie get to the house. Oh, and then and the she gets a gun. Yeah, and she sneaks her little pistol, which is like the same gun she has in the game. I like that little attention to detail. Yeah, but, but uh, yeah, you also could have done that <clears throat> without having to tell the story of Bill and Frank. Yeah, you know it. it, it the story itself, by itself, was good. Yeah, it was, it was a really a, nice story. Really well told, good story. You know, you got this <laughs> schizophrenic, freaking survivalist guy. Yeah, he's like a straight up like QAnon type, like in his basement, like you new world order motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you have this other. I don't know how you would describe his character, like free. Who Frank? Yeah, he's like free going, like just do whatever. Life is like life is a journey, hmm. kind of thing. He's kind of one of those, and then they, you know, come together. You you get like this tension mm-hmm. because Bill's over here, like, Fuck, kill, I'd kill you. Go ahead, make the wrong move. Because I think it's been about three years since Frank stumbled into that hole of his. I think that was the time time uh, lapse there. Oh, you're talking about from the beginning yeah. to, and then to three, the point that him and Frank are, uh, meet. Yeah, three yeah, years gotcha. until he finds gotcha. him in that yeah, hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, he's been three years just by himself entirely. No fucking dog or nothing, you know, just... <laughs> he's living his dream because as a survivalist, that's like what you want to do. Yeah, he's I mean, he comes fucking... out of his house after the, you know, feds fucking checked his house. He's like, ah, yes. <laughs> fucking let's go. Yeah. <laughs> three years later, he's got a whole fucking, the whole town locked down. He was not fucking around. No, he was Just like in the game, Bill, don't fuck around. But that, yeah, the story itself by itself was good, but I didn't like the episode because there was zero progression for the story. Mm. And yeah, I mean, that's that's essentially it. The, yeah. the, I come from the world of anime. <laughs> and in anime, <laughs> you get a decent amount of filler. And I've watched Naruto. And that motherfucker has filler. However, we did not get filler in the first three episodes Mm -hmm. of a show. So that bugged me because I'm like, this is not a time for you to do filler. You have to establish more of the story. You don't really have much established other than Joel and Ellie are now moving to, you know, whatever. whatever. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess he doesn't know where they're going yet. Exactly. He's just trying to get her somewhere. Exactly. To other fireflies, which is why they went to that play, that museum, whatever. That's where they're supposed to meet. All those fireflies are fucking dead. Uh, all yeah. of them were dead, yeah. So, so now you're leaving them in limbo, and then you go off to this filler episode mm-hmm. that had nothing to do, no progression. You don't, You still don't have an idea of where they're exactly going. Yeah. And that bugged me because I was like, dude, I just wasted... An hour and 10 minutes to find out nothing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like like I said, like the little bit of progression we got was just like the last 10 fucking minutes. Yeah. And it was just them getting the truck and that's it. Yeah. And leaving. But as for the story <laughs> itself, we'll talk about yeah. the story itself and how it was a good little nice little love story thing going on. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And not something you usually see in a post apocalyptic world other than like The Walking Dead. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Which was something I was going to bring up that um, I, I think Bill and Frank are probably the two luckiest fucking people in this apocalypse. Yeah. Like, what's the odds? Ever. Like, like they're totally self sufficient in their own place. They found love amazingly. Uh huh. You know, like willful love. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it wasn't yeah. forced. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. I was like, so, like, they found that, like, together and then had a long life. And, well, spoiler alert, they they got to, you know, die old and happy on their own terms. Uh, a little bit more on Bill's terms, not Frank's, just because Frank didn't want Bill to do what he did. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But so, then it's also. But they did accept it yeah. in the end. He didn't argue. He's like, man. Yeah. But then, then Frank said, like, I do not support this. I should be mad at you. He's like, but it's also, like, fucking romantic. Yeah, it's romantic <laughs> as fuck. It sure is. 
but I, I knew it as and soon here as I he, am uh, still single. <laughs> can't find anybody to do a suicide pack. I got a fucking, yeah. I got a world full of like 8 billion people. <laughs> <laughs> See, all you need is an apocalypse. You can get your own Frank in a hole. I'm waiting for it, bro. <laughs> I want the apocalypse. <laughs> you can uh, dig your own hole. You'll catch your own Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Catch your own Frank. Yeah. <laughs> like he was out there fishing for the motherfucker. He's just like, all right, <laughs> today's the day. I'm going to get this motherfucker. <laughs> right. When Frank fogs in, he's like, I got you. <laughs> going to have to be quicker than this. <laughs> um, nah, but yeah, no, it, it, it was nice. It was sad, though, because. Oh, uh, yeah. Super sad. Super. For Frank, it was cancer, right? I don't think they ever said. I want to assume it was cancer because they had he had mentioned how there was no cure for it even before the the whole apocalypse. Yeah, because he also but yeah, I mean cancer would do that. But I was like, yeah, Frank was super. You know, he couldn't wipe his own mouth with his napkin at the end. You know, kind of shit like that. And cancer does that. Yeah, I know. That's why I was like, oh, well, cancer does that. <laughs> but then again, he's not like I don't imagine he's going through leukemia. You know, no, sorry, not leukemia. Um, chemotherapy. Chemotherapy. Yeah, because chemotherapy makes you bald. Yeah. Or you have to be bald because Your hair's of the uh, the radiation kind of fucks with the... It's something weird about the hair. I forget well, what plus, it is. I, I hear a lot of those people um, who have to go through chemo shave their head first because just to see yeah. your hair and everything falling out, it, they said it feels like you just loot watching yourself fall away. You feel away, like, yeah. You know, like, which I, can, I cannot imagine that. But... Imagine going through something like that after the world's ended. Yeah. You know? And they, 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 they lived, even had medication for it somehow. Or they something, had, they something suppressed. Yeah. Well, like, because, you know, so we get a little flashback. Joel and Tess came by. Yeah. Because yeah, uh, yeah. Frank had been fucking around with the radio and found Tess, which was funny. He's like, and by the way, I was on the radio. I, you fucking what? <laughs> I will say <laughs> it was kind of random how it jumped from. Them being in bed, you know, doing the thing, and then they <laughs> doing the thing, they going yeah. down. Ew. And I was like, I heard, I heard a little fucking noise, and I was like, ah, ah, yeah. <laughs> we are straight, and that is not <laughs> normal for us. Yeah, I guess you could say so. But it, from that, it cuts to what another three years something later like that, yeah. or something like that, and. Frank's just running out of the fucking house. Fuck you, Bill. Like, I was like, what the hell just happened? I was like, oh my God, it got aggressive real quick. Just like that. <laughs> he's like, I happened to find a nice lady on the radio. And he's like, you what? You fucking what? Well, he, he hit him like with three things. He's like, I just want to fix up the town. And Bill's like, who fucking cares? Yeah. He's And Frank's like, it's not our home. Like just our house. It's the whole place. Yeah. And then he's like, it's about Frank. have some Frank's like, if you fucking say resource management. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking lose it. <laughs> but I'm like, he's right though. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. but uh but yeah, then he kept pushing it. He's like, and then finally Bill's like, fuck it, fine. And then he's like, and I'm gonna fix up the boutique. And I was working on the radio. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, that was that that was the thing. He's like, you know, we for uh, visitors, he's like, what visitors? Like we're not I happen to be talking to a nice lady on the radio. And just ran in the house. You what? <laughs> I, I was cracking up too when uh, Frank's like, if I fucking, you know, what he's like, you stay down there in your basement and the government's Nazis. And Bill's like, the God, they are fucking Nazis. <laughs> yeah. And Frank's like, well, yeah, but, but not then. <laughs> now, yeah, but not then. <laughs> he's just, they are Nazis. <laughs> that, like I said, the story alone was nice. And just having that, that yeah. type of like clash, like you see in any other relationship. Yeah. Two opposites attracting. For sure. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. One's like, I feel like he's like hippie-ish. Mm, for sure. What was it I, on the commentary after the episode? They were talking about Frank and basically how Frank knows how to prove his worth, I guess. Mm, you know? Okay. Yeah. Not saying that like, the, you know, sex is his only way, his only ticket in. That's not his only like attribute, I guess. But like, he knows like Frank. Frank's like basically this whole time Frank's been proving his worth to everybody, I guess. Right. And he knows how to do that. But yeah, as for as for like the the uncomfortable scene, which you know, like you know, you get a little like mm, it's a little weird watching two bearded guys making out, old bearded guys making out, old white bearded guys making out. <laughs> <laughs> Keep adding on. 
Uh, so yeah, I was like, that made us like uncomfortable, but like, that's, I think that's the point, you know? Cause like we see Bill, like, cause he's, he's Hesitate. having like a li literally like having a coming of age moment. You know, he'd never said it, which is crazy because of how old he is in yeah. that scene. Probably forties. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. I would, I would say forties because yeah. then they die roughly 60 ish, 20 years later, it's been 20 years, 20 years later. Yeah. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> yeah, so he's having a coming of age moment, and for him, he's never been comfortable enough to allow himself to come out. Yeah. He and never, yeah. in that moment, even to himself. Yeah. No. In that moment, you see him coming out, and for him, he feels uncomfortable. You can see it in like his eyes, yeah. his his mannerisms, like he's like yeah. He feels so tight. In yeah, the neck he's, and he's, and he's He's all locked up. Yes, and like when they're making out, you know, he's like, like he's very. He, hesitant. he like lightly starts kind of touching them a little bit. So yeah, I was like, it made us uncomfortable, but like, that's the point. Because if we're uncomfortable, like you know how uncomfortable he was for those like you know first ten minutes or yeah. whatever, however long you know. And they and I think that was that was that was well played. That was that that's that's good storytelling. Yeah, that we're sitting here kind of going like. It's a yeah, that's definitely a good use of yeah of cinematography for sure get, giving the visuals of how uncomfortable a scene can't like for the character is <clears throat> uh so yeah i mean and me being wanting to be in the film that definitely i i i saw it but yeah still yeah <laughs> yeah i was not i was i was like this isn't normal for me <laughs> Why is this happening in a zombie apocalypse? <laughs> Why doing this? Where's the fungus? <laughs> Where's the pow 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 pow? <laughs> yeah. But uh uh yeah, there was that. I, I I still liked I really liked the story, but honestly, I I, I kind of missed crotchety old Bill who's always just talking shit. <laughs> you know, but yeah. <laughs> you know, he's like these fucking motherfucking Joel comes on your truck. He's just talking shit the whole time. <laughs> yeah. I missed that Bill. Which so we still got sort of that Bill. But but not enough. Not you know they 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 turned him down a little bit, which is kind of which. Meh. I mean that that version of Bill I'm talking about was before he met Frank. I'd say, like if we had if he had never met Frank, that's probably who we would have gotten. Mm. Right. But right, since right. we got Frank, you know Frank toned him down a little bit. That is true. Which like because he true. even said, you know, before I met you, I was never scared. Mm. I, that was a good line right there. Yeah. Because, I mean, he's been doing the apocalypse for... Oh, no. I thought it was cliche <laughs> as fuck. I mean, a little bit. A little bit. A little, a little, bit. little, little cheesy. A little bit. But, but it fitting because be a... he's been living on his own in this apocalypse for, you know, six years or whatever before he meets Frank. Cheesy romance. Or three years, I guess. Before he meets Frank. Yeah. And now, now he's afraid. Yeah. That's the only thing that's made him afraid. Because he had to look at himself. There was a point in there, though, that <clears throat> I... Thought Bill Shit, was gonna sorry. die prematurely. Oh, where he got shot, I thought he. I was like, damn, they're gonna end it like this, huh? That's that. I I thought that. I, I did too. I was like, oh shit, this is how they're going with the story. Okay, what's gonna? Are we gonna see Frank later? And then they move on, and they're older. And I was like, oh, okay, oh, okay, he lived. And he's pushing <laughs> Frank around in a wheelchair and shit. Um, not gonna lie, I still was thinking Ron Swanson. I know. I, the whole time I was like, I've never seen Ron Swanson in such a state before. <laughs> I know what you heard was, give me a lot of meat. <laughs> what I meant, I meant was, was, give me all, all of the meat. bacon. <laughs> and then he's in Home Depot. I know more than you. Fucking <laughs> 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 prude. <laughs> I love Ron Swanson. What is it? Uh, here's my permit. I can do what I want. <laughs> Just fucking, here you go. Just walks off. Uh, that, at the very end with Joel and Ellie, um, when they go to their house and Joel's Tell, like when uh, Ellie starts asking him about, you know, starts start just kind of poke prying again, you know. Yeah, and Joel's yeah, like, "All right, you. let's get some ground rules right here." You know, as he's like, "As a matter of fact, you 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 can keep. Let's just both keep our past to ourselves." That whole shit was like word for word from the game. Oh yeah, yeah, I like yeah, yeah. that. I like that. But I, I I feel like it's appropriate for them to do that because the game did come first. The game did have a lot of good story. Oh yeah, and good dialogue. So why not? Why not pull oh, yeah. some of that good dialogue and throw it over into the show? It just makes sense. I know. I, 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 they're they're doing good, and it, but it it's uh, and it's even it, I like it even more because like uh, you know Bill, sorry Bill, Joel never wanted to do this from the start. He didn't want anything to do with Ellie. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. now he has to. Yeah. I mean, he was gonna do it with Tess, but now she's gone. 
theoretically, he could just bounce. But even though Joel's, you know, an asshole, there's no fucking way he'd leave Ellie on her own. Well, even Ellie, at one point in the show, was like, no one forced you to do this. Which, yeah, I uh, I like that, too, because she tells him that. She's like, nobody t- made you and Tess take me, and Joel just finally went. Yeah, it was when he was, like, mourning. Yeah, he just nodded, like, you're right. And he, he let go, and I was like, you did that's, it, yeah. that's, that's mature. Yeah. Because I he, know if someone told me that, I still would have been like, I don't give a fuck. My, you know, my friend, my dear friend, close friend for years died because after I met you. Yeah. And, and that's just me being the vindictive person yeah. that I am. But you got to imagine that type of emotional trauma that someone can be dealing with in that situation. They're not going to they're never going to think straight. Yeah. And they'll always have that little bit of them that's like, fuck. Yeah. There's always going to be that little part, even though he'll get over, you know, get over it later. But there's always going to be that little part that looks at Ellie and just goes like, fucking Tess. Yeah. I'm trying trying to think of like, there's another show that did that element where it was someone else's fault. Or they, they, they tied the death of some other person that they were close to, to the person that they're now traveling with. And I can't remember what fucking show it was. It was fairly recent, I think. But I can't. Uh, it's hmm. gonna bug me. I'll figure it out. <laughs> I'll figure it out. I know it's the next week. Uh, but <clears> I <throat> think that was it. Uh, the only thing was the preview for the next episode. Where... I didn't even watch that. Oh no! I never watch previews. Oh, well, it's just I, mean, I never I can... watch previews. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I, I'm weird because. Even even with anime, I don't want to know what happens. I don't even want an idea of what happens next because it allows me to go in fresh. Hmm. You know, I don't have any expectations. Remember how we were talking about like trailers when they mm-hmm. start revealing too much? That's previews for me. Yeah, like three trailers in. Stop. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like that Evil Dead trailer that, that I showed you, that one Red Band one. Yeah. That's the only trailer I'm watching for that movie. I'm like, leave it right there. That's all you need. Because that was scary as fuck and i'm like okay this movie about to be hot yeah that shit sold me just that one trailer that's how you know it's a good trailer <laughs> plus i don't it. think it's gonna be advertised as as much i don't think it is already yeah i mean other than that trailer and like a little like because it comes uh, it posters. comes yeah it comes out in april did, right we did, i think it comes out in april yeah i think so but do you think you'd be like bill in regards to surviving the zombie apocalypse, I mean, obviously, I think that'd be ideal, but shit, like, because he's st- well, he started off the zombie like <laughs> for us, yeah, we have people that we care about that are that we live with or that we're near, and he was kind of just on his own from the very get. Yeah, I I, I want to know that backstory because like <sighs> of why he's you like. You think he was living in that white picket fence? fancy house by himself who knows i i really don't know because that's honestly. a total suburbia looking fucking neighborhood you know yeah it was what was the location supposed to be again it was supposed um, to be in boston 10 miles west of boston or something Ten miles west of boston yeah that's another thing that's like the biggest criticism the show was getting was when they were like 10 miles west of boston everybody who like lives near boston's like nope <laughs> that is not what 10 miles west of here fucking looks like <laughs> absolutely not <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, nah, I, this is like really fucked up to say, Oh, <laughs> if a zombie apocalypse or any sort of apocalypse were to happen, I think I'm lone wolfing it. I think so. Because I, I get irritated on a daily when I give someone instructions to do something and they they know that they have to do it, but they don't know how. And then now I have to waste my time to explain to that person how to fucking like do something in a way that's more efficient. And that happened shit. That happened a lot in the fucking military. Oh yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I get really irritated with that. And I don't want to do that in a place where I have to survive. So you're gonna you're gonna bounce out on your family because of possible irritation? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you knew Damn. my family, yeah. <laughs> hey, I love you guys, but, but he's gonna fucking leave you all to die. Yeah, I wouldn't. Okay, you <laughs> you have fun with that. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'll be somewhere. 
No, but I've I've, I've always said I think my first plan if some kind of viral outbreak, some kind of shit like that hits, I'm going to the mountains. Straight. Going up to the mountains. Straight to the mountains. There's not going to be a lot of fucking people up there. Your you, your zombie problems probably going to be pretty low. Do you have? I'm I'm very curious because I'm actually starting mine. Do you have a post apocalyptic pack? Well, like a go bag. Yes. No. Uh, you should get that started. <laughs> I guess so. Because huh? if you go straight up to the mountains without one, now you got to figure out everything. You're gonna die cold and hungry up there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, you may you may like I know I know you have like a, a machete or something along those lines, like a tomahawk axe or something that you can use to kill like a small animal. Yeah. But you still need other things. Yeah. Right? No, I mean I'm not gonna go up to the side of you know Donner Summit and just pitch a tent. Why not? I'm gonna go up to like Angel's Camp up by Bear, by, you know Bear Valley. I'm gonna kick open the door to a cabin. This is where I live now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I definitely am a mountains person too. I think that's the one of the best bets for zombie or saying you know viral kind of whatever kind of shit. At least the zombie that we're thinking of. Yeah, like the slow moving. Like, ugh. I mean, even any kind of thing because like your population there is gonna be way smaller. Oh yeah. So like your zombie yeah. problem is gonna be gonna be probably not your highest problem. Weren't they in the mountains in the beginning of The Walking Dead, though? I don't and they think somehow, so. They, they were, were. They were in, like, Savannah, Georgia, weren't they? They were in Atlanta, Georgia. But when they rescued Rick mm. from Atlanta, the city, they went up to mountains. Oh, I forgot about that. Because that's where the other camp was. That's been so long. I forgot. And that's when Daryl... No, not Daryl. I think, yeah, Daryl yeah, found out about... Daryl, uh, Merle. Carol's husband was smacking her around at the time. And that's when Daryl found out about that. Then there's also... Didn't Shane beat the shit out of that guy, too? Oh, Shane fucked him up. I like that, too. I was like, my man. Everyone's like, stop. He's like, nope. <laughs> he was fucking... Like, you in the episodes after where you see him just bruised and yellow and blue and all types of... Fuck. Yeah, his face rearranged. <laughs> but they were up in the mountains and eventually, like, a, a group of zombies got to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, like, I'm not saying, like, it wouldn't happen. Sure, zombies just kind of just pick a direction and just start walking. So you'd get more, but I think starting out, like, you'd be okay. Zombies probably wouldn't be your number one problem. A plan for me for the zombie apocalypse would be to dig in the ground. You going underground? Uh Uh-huh. It's not a bad idea. Either that or find a cave of some sort. Mm -hmm. Because even though there's only one way out, that means there's only one way in. Right. You that's all I have to look at. Yeah. In you order to worry about a back door or none. Yeah. That's true. That's true. I, I think that would be and when it, my go to. Especially at like nighttime up in like the cabin I'm in. And I'm, I'm like, fuck, I gotta look out windows and shit. In the cave, it's dark. You're like, I don't, I don't give a shit. Just fucking. <laughs> well, even if it's dark, like you could still build up some type of barrier so you could still have like a fire off to the side, mm-hmm. maybe. Because, you know, you're going to have a fire. It's going to get cold some nights. You got to. Warm up a little bit. Oh, Maybe that it. fire. I don't know how zombies fucking react to fire, but they'd be like, hey, oh, well, there's light. <laughs> hey, guys. Just wait. <laughs> brains. <laughs> just wait. <laughs> brains. Someone's smart enough to start a fire. Let's go over there. Let's eat that. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, you definitely need idea. to get a pack. Yeah, it's probably it's true. Get some, get some MREs. Mm. Get uh, a fire starter kit. You get your shovel slash e tool of some yeah. sort. Yeah. Uh, what else? Maybe a tent, or if mm. you if you're so inclined to use the environment around you as a as a household. Yeah. Make yourself a sh- makeshift shelter. Yeah. What else? What else would you need? Well, I was gonna say if you're going underground, if you went and found like some preppers like underground bunker, you're set. Oh yeah. You're set. But then I got to worry about if they're still alive because hmm. if they are preppers. Assuming they're not. And you just, I mean, like say you find them in their house or dead on the kitchen floor. Then you see the big fucking hatch in the backyard. And you're like, yeah. That reminds me of the movie. Uh, oh, my God. I'm fucking drawing a blank on this one. Too. It has a uh, fucking Aragorn. <laughs> oh, it. oh, The Road? The, yes. I love that movie. The book was great, too. When he, uh, when him and his son go and find that one hatch. And they go into the underground bunker, yeah, and that they, was fucked up. Yeah, I remember that part in the book even was scary. But oh yeah, really? Like, yeah, yeah. Book was really good. Hmm. I read it in like high school. But uh, 
Yeah, I remember. Yeah, they open up down there. They find like just fucking loaded. The house was loaded with preserves, food. They're like, "Fuck, we made it!" And then they're like, "What's that hatch?" Go in there, and then there's people down there that have been down there like forever. Well, for as long as shit's been happening, they've been chained up. Like, what the fuck was going on down there? You know? Oh, so in the movie they removed that. They they, they removed that scene. They didn't have that in the in the movie. It's been so long since I saw the movie. No, in the movie they but. I guess the book, I mean, that's the differences between books and movies. But in the movie, it was just they found the hatch and they're like, yeah, they're living perfectly fine. Was that? That wasn't how it ended, though. No, no, no. Because I remember the ending. The, the ending, the dad died. Yeah. And he gets taken on. The kid gets taken on by some other kind of passerby. Yeah. Who seems like a good guy. but And knows. they were following them for so long. I was like, dude, that's because he said like he figured out they had a kid so he's like let's go see and he's fucking trying to catch him that movie seems like a good guy but it's a crazy post-apocalyptic world too though because mm. what was it the just the world just i don't went, even remember went how ablaze. it happened it just ended i just remember fire fire was the biggest thing mm. and i felt like the whole world just went ablaze it kind of makes sense because everything is like burnt out black looking and shit yeah I just remember, like, the desperation in that fucking book and movie. Like, the dad, he has his revolver, right? But he's got to... He he makes sure he always keeps at least two bullets. You know, for him and his son. Yeah. But I remember, like, he's like, I can't have a revolver with only two bullets and point it at somebody if I need to, because they're going to look and go, oh, he's got no fucking ammo in there. So I remember him, like, carving and whittling and painting his own, like, wooden bullets yeah. just to make it look like he had shit. And I remember he had to use it, and it worked. And that that's a survival tactic that you <laughs> might have to use... Just it's fucking, fucking fake wild. it till you make it, you know? It's fucking wild. I mean, even the the desperation the desperation was all types of like that that movie made me like <laughs> you get really ang- yeah, it's real fucking uh edge of your seat nail biter. And it was super sad with his wife. I forgot about the wife. The wife, so in the movie, at least in the movie, I don't know what if the book was any different, but the wife basically walked out in the family and said, I can't fucking do this. Mm. I'm I'm gone. Like after the apocalypse started? Yeah. She was peaced out? Yeah. It was, like, luck, ho. it was like a year or two ago or a year or two and she was like, I can't do this. And she goes and she runs off into the wilderness, no clothes, no anything. It was cold as fuck. She's an idiot. And so she, she just tried to kill herself basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and she just fucking out. I was like, yeah. good luck. It's not good luck. She's killing herself. Yeah, I mean, what the fuck? I don't know. Just have <laughs> That's fun. not <laughs> have fun, I guess. <laughs> nah, dude. The the amount of pain that I saw in the dad's eyes, I was just like, I, I, dude. I if my read. wife, if my wife was that at that breaking point of I'm done, I'm gonna, I'm ending my life. This is not. No, I'm not living this. You are, huh? You're gonna kill yourself too if she does that. Oh uh, yeah, I probably. What about you? What about your boy? Dude, fuck him. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. That's where you say good luck, Matt. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not to your son, who's like, what, 10? Nah, he'll be fine. But no, nah, I'm that part in the book, when they open that hatch, I remember, I think those people have been down there forever. It was like a tortured yeah, I don't know chamber what, or something? But they were like down there, like emaciated and shit and all fucked up because they've been living in the dark for years. Oh, what the fuck? And I, I think they could talk. I remember them just like freaking out, like, like fuck, there's people, you know? And they're like, help us. We're fucking like going crazy. But they want help, but they're going crazy. And like they're fucking oh, they're alive. Them. Yeah. Oh, fuck. And they're like I running after they're dead. <laughs> and they're and the dead and them are like, fuck, run. And they fucking run. And they have to slam it and lock those people back in there while they hear them screaming like, help us. Oh, no, wait. Yeah. You're talking about, uh, you're talking about the second house that they went to. Uh, There's a second house that they had gone to and they found a bunch of those people. Yeah. Okay. I okay. do remember That's that. The- that wasn't the movie. Gotcha. It wasn't at the part. We were at different parts okay. yeah, points well, in the story. Like I said, it's been years since I read it. I just remember that part. And I remember it, like, after reading reading it even, I was like, that was fucking crazy. No, it, it was pretty fucked up in the... Really uh, unsettling, because there's people who are aware, but... And know, then you had the, the group that was actually having those people in chains and stuff coming back in the movie. And they're like, fuck, where do we go? Because the people in the basement were trying to climb out hmm. or escape as the... Enemy, I guess I, I was just say enemy. It's easier to say, was coming back to the house, wandering back. Oh yeah, and they were that. inside the house, like, what are you gonna do? I remember that. Yeah, the people got out, and then they those people know. came back, and they're like, oh, 
I think they went out the window or some shit like that. But I, I got to rewatch and reread that shit, I think. Yeah, really it was good. my first time watching the movie, and I was like, okay. Yeah. yeah. That, but I don't know. I, I don't think I could deal with having a group. I mean, if I'm going to have, like, I, we've said it before. Small like, group. Three people. Three to five max, I'd say. And they all have to know what the fuck they're doing. Because mm-hmm. if they don't, and I have to pick up for someone else, nah, <laughs> That's nah, why, uh, I, I'll straight up go dictatorship and I'll be like, dude, get the <laughs> fuck out of here. Go it's fuck not a yourself. Democracy. It's a rictatorship. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking dumb. That was a dumb <laughs> that was such a dumb meme. <laughs> I loved it, man. <laughs> it's, it's a rictatorship. It's a rictatorship. I love I love how Rick just snapped though, man. I love that. But um that that's like a what is it I heard them say about The Walking Dead? Like everybody wants to think they'd be more like Rick, but in reality, I think we'd be a lot, all be a lot more like Shane than we think. Oh yeah, yeah. Because like, like I know, it's, I think I'm probably have said it before on the show, but like with Shane, like when they get to Herschel's farm and everything, yeah. I, I know I've said it before, but they're all, "Hey, welcome, welcome, everybody's welcome. Eat, have your fill. Don't go in the barn though. Anyway, you know, just hang out. What's in that barn? Nah, no, fuck that. What's in there? Yeah." And I would have done that. Nah, uh-uh. I'm going to go find out. Go run and look. I'm just fucking throw the doors open. I don't know. I'd like to think I'd be like Glenn. What? Just try to fuck the farmer's daughter? <laughs> yeah. I remember when that came out, I was like, man, Maggie's crazy. She hot though, but she's crazy. At least back then she was fucking crazy. <laughs> what, what's her name? Lauren, Lauren Coheen? Is that her name? I think that's her, the actress's name. She's got some, she's got big eyes, but they're fucking pretty. Mm. Holy shit. I just remember, I'm like, what in the uh, what in tarnation? What in, what in tarnation? <laughs> yeah, no, she 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 played a good character. I liked her character. Mm-hmm. Glenn Post definitely uh he, he got the better end of the deal on that. I'm just very curious on what everyone's obsession with post apocalyptic world is. I I was looking up that that question before we started recording, and I really wanted to find some type of psychological study on people's obsession with the post apocalyptic oh, world. Oh, that's out there for sure, but. I know my obsession for it. What's that? Or I I know my reason opinion on why everyone's obsessed with it. They want to restart. Mm. The world is fucking ass. They want to just fucking slam the restart button. I think so. I think that that's probably the biggest reason that we think of it cuz no one wants there's no reason that everyone wants like all people to die. And then be alone in a world, mm. giant fucking world that had so much history. Yeah, and it's all not that. like you can hop on a plane anymore. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that's the. They just want to reset. They want to reset like certain policies, rules, laws, structures. Um, well, also, I think too, if it wasn't for a lot of those rules, people would turn into fucking animals. No, no doubt. So I think a lot of people, maybe just uh, their base instinct is like, I just want to, you know, watch the fucking world burn. But they can't do it now because they'll go to jail. (laughs) But if there is no government, then fucking, well, that's Uh, why there'd be a lot more raiders and bandits out there for sure. But those raiders and bandits were, (laughs) at least for today, like in regular world, those raiders and bandits only come about because something was taken from them at some point in their life. Right. And they're using that as an excuse to do like burglary or, Hmm. uh, home invasion type shit. Whereas if, you know, you go into a post-apocalyptic world, you don't have that. Like they, they're free to do whatever. Yeah. I was just saying, would they actually be burglars or bandits or, Hmm. I mean, they probably would just because of history, like people that are being fucked with pre apocalyptic and then post apocalyptic. They're like, no, nah, I remember what happened to me. I'm going to fucking do this and that and the other. I could be part of it, but I think a lot of it would be kind of what I was saying. Like now they're just let off the leash. That's always been in them, but they could never do it. But now they're <clears> let off and can do whatever the fuck they want. No, no repercussions except for, you know, they got to fight for their life, I guess. I guess that's me <clears throat> hoping that there's m- more good mm-hmm. than there are bad. 
I mean, yeah, we all hope because that. a lot of the people that done bad things in their life is because they were put in bad circumstances or bad situations that twisted their mind to think a certain way. Well, I think of, natural human nature is a lot more nurturing than we think. E, yeah. Just due to societal structure currently, it's why we have so many vindictive hmm. people nowadays. Hmm. Yeah, I get it. I mean, I, I think it could be, I think it could really could go either way. You probably got two groups of people, you know, or I guess. Hopefully more than two groups. I'm tired of these bipartisan <laughs> shit. Black and white. Uh -uh. Yeah. Most things are gray. Most things land somewhere in the middle. Like 95% of things are gray. <laughs> But it will always be a fantasy, hopefully. Hopefully it just stays that way. Yeah. Cause uh, man, I don't want I don't even want to think about it. I don't I mean I do want to think about it, but I don't want to think about it at the same time. I mean honestly, I I liked Negan. I never finished the whole show, but in mm. the beginning, I liked Negan. Why? Because of Lucille? <laughs> no. I mean You like Lucille, huh? She got some nice curves. She got huh? some curves. She got she got some. She's a little sharp, she but got, she got some nice curves. She got some meaty bits on her. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's face. But um, <laughs> that's Glenn you're talking about, you son of a Damn. bitch. Like, <laughs> oh my God, dude. Oh, oh God. I'm I remember watching morning. I remember watching that. Me and my buddy were like, God damn. I'm like, oh, like when that shit happened. When his eyeball was like sticking out, bro. Fuck. But uh I mourned no. for a long time. Like later on after that, I remember like when he's back at his uh what was their settlement called? The, oh fuck! I don't. Know. Doesn't matter. I rewatched it too, and I, I but, don't. But uh, yeah, they're at their place, and like he's Negan's super, you know, swift with judgment and punishment. You know, even though it's harsh yeah. sometimes, most times. But then, like a lot of the times, I'd see him do shit, and I'm like, I kind of agree with him because I'd be like, "You want to come here? Cool, help us out." But I'm like, "But you fuck me, now you're fucking dead." <laughs> me. <laughs> That's like. A lot of villains, though, like I guess I, so. like Thanos was right. I mean, he, he, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Thanos had a point, and like he said with Gamora's plan or whatever, he's like, "Have you been back since I did it?" Oh yeah, you know, he's you? like, "They're thriving. Yeah. Kids never, kids aren't hungry anymore." Sure, I had to, you know, I had to do some fucked up shit to make it happen, but but do that, the end. It comes to that question: Do the ends justify the means? Not always. That's but. a that's a that's a very very heavy question. Mm -hmm. Very that's heavy, all. and honestly, I don't think anyone can really answer that like straight off the bat. And if you can, that's it totally means you're un you're uneducated as fuck. <laughs> well, that's just totally subjective. That's just totally up to you. Like, what are you, what your values and goals are? Do those ends justify that means? Do, yes. Does killing, you know, thousands of lives, yes, lives to save millions in the future, yes. You know, I kind of agree, but that's shitty. I I, I wouldn't want to. I would. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to make the decision. Yeah, I wouldn't want to. I don't think I could make that decision. No, because that's crazy. Like I think that's the right decision, but don't make me press that button. You ultimately, know? <laughs> you, you, it's you, you're taking lives, mm -hmm. and taking lives, whether it's direct or indirect, is still it's 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 a there's a toll, mm. a little bit of a toll. And especially that many lives, fuck. Yeah, on a fucking massive scale like that. Yeah, that's... I, even Thanos talks about it. I, I'm pretty sure in the movies he even mentioned like I didn't like, you know, I took the lives because I wanted everyone to thrive. Like he was doing it for the right reasons, just not. <laughs> He's like they called me the mad. right way. The Mad Titan. They called me mad. I just love seeing the memes. It's like yeah, Thanos was right. He had a fucking point. And, and, and he had a point. In Hawkeye, remember? He's at the fucking, at the urinal and Thanos was right. He's like, oh, yeah. I did see <laughs> that. The first like 10 seconds of the episode. <laughs> I was like, mm. But see, then that that's totally like, you know, somebody wrote that. But then from Hawkeye's point of view, who lost Natasha and however many other people. he's like, And his this, family. Yeah, he's like this motherfucker, you know. How can you write that? You know, that's why I say totally subjective. And that's... I'd, I'd like I'd go so far to say that's almost an impossible question to answer. I mean, we all have our ideas of what's the what's the right answer, but would you press that button? Yeah, yeah. It's it's a lot. It should be a lot harder than people think. And like I said, if you if you come with a straight up answer and be like, you know, 
do the ends justify the means? Yup. And you just straight up say, yes. I would do some self-evaluation. How about you, how about you mull that one over just for a little bit longer? Yeah. Just would, like, just like a, think about it. I would go read some like books about morale. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that kind of decision. Morality. You can't just knee jerk react that decision. No. That's, that's, uh, you got to sit down and get right with yourself and, and, and get right with well, Jesus before you make that decision. And if you can, <laughs> dude, you got to screw loose. Yeah. Because that means you. But. I, I'm not giving you the presidency to fucking yeah. just be over here. Click. I, I tell you who I'm not getting the launch code. <laughs> yeah. Boom, boom. Fucking nutcase. Anyways, yeah. post apocalyptic world. Hopefully that never comes to fruition, but who knows? World War III is right around the corner, so we'll see. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, um, so next week's episode, and we're going to. Here we come. Woo! Next week's episode, we'll be talking about. Uh, what fantasy world would you want to live in? Yeah. And this goes literally across the board. What type of world you would want to live in? Wizards, the Lord of the Rings. You want to go fucking, I don't know, werewolves and vampire shit. Do you want to go live in a post-apocalyptic world? Do you want to, you know, all those kinds of things. And we're basically just going to open openly discuss about our choices. Hmm? Maybe some reasoning as to why. And maybe why as- not. Yeah, why or why not? Like, why you wouldn't want to live in a certain other world versus the one that you're choosing? Yeah, there's plenty of worlds from movies and games that you know we love. Oh yeah, but then you too. then you think about it and go, ooh, but that's that's a, that reality is dog shit. I don't want to live in that. At all. <laughs> I don't want to do that at all. Yeah. That's, that's bad. <laughs> exactly. So that's gonna be next week. Uh, figure we give you guys a heads up since we didn't give you a heads up last week. Yep. So um, we, uh, screwed the pooch on that one last week. Yeah. So. Oopsie. Thanks once again for tuning in to Big FN Nerds. We appreciate the the views, the yep. likes, yep. the comments that you guys are hopefully giving us. And hopefully some shares too. Uh, we definitely want to get more people involved with the nerd community and just see where you guys land on all this stuff that we talk about. Because we we like our opinions. We think we yeah. have good conversation. But, but we don't want this to just be an echo chamber. You yeah. know? We got to yeah. get other, other input. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, check us out on, yeah, in order to do that, check us out on TikTok, Instagram, anchor.fm and Spotify. Uh, also YouTube, you can subscribe there. You can also obviously comment and let us know what you think. And I think that is probably it for me, Matt. Do you have anything else for that? Yeah. One thing. Oh yeah. Later daters. Three zombies dead right there. <laughs> <laughs> <All> right, later. <laughs>